Today I've got something really special for you. If you remember, around Christmas last year I made a baby Ludo, a tribute to my love of all things Jim Henson. So this film is a two-parter. Next week's film is going to be another make, this time dedicated to the giant of Japanese animation, Studio Ghibli. So tune in for that, but for now I'm going to deconstruct what it is about Ghibli films that's so universally appealing, why it's important to me, and why this should be a part of your life too. I have a confession to make. I'm an animation addict. I even went to study it at university. I'm that much of a nerd. I love it all, particularly the weird stuff from Eastern Europe. You know the stuff I mean. The stuff that makes no sense and you shake your head afterwards and say, what on earth did I just watch? Anyway, I wanted to write about one of my favourite animation studios today, Studio Ghibli. They're based in Tokyo and were founded in 1985. Their first film was Lapita, Castle in the Sky, a story about a kidnapped girl who discovers a mystical floating city via a magic crystal. Their first big hit, however, was Kiki's Delivery Service in 1989. They've won countless awards for their work, and their 2003 piece Spirited Away became the second highest grossing film of all time in Japan. Their style is very distinctive, because there are running themes in their work. They often have heroines at the forefront of the story, Hal's Sophie, Spirited Away's Chihiro, and of course, Princess Mononoke. Women do not stand in the background in these films, quietly holding the world together for their men. Many of the films have environmentalism at their heart, the implication that our world needs protecting, and that we are responsible for our actions. Pompoko's raccoons protect their forest, for example, and they reinforce the idea that one person can make a difference. When Spirited Away's Chihiro pulls a thorn from No Face's side, she pulls out a great deluge of sludgy waste, and he is relieved to be free of it. Pacifism is also an important part of the Ghibli ethos. You only need to look at Porco Rosso, The Wind Rises, and The Harrowing Grave of the Fireflies to see the futility of conflict and its diametrically opposite need to love your fellow man. Love and family is also important. Many of the main characters are children, and their familial routines often feature, together with the dynamics of that family. This placement of children is important. Miyazaki, the studio's main animator, wants us to see the world with a childlike wonder again. However, while their stories are loved by all generations, they are, very importantly, not patronising to children. There are big themes here, and while intricacies may be lost to younger viewers, the main ideas will not be. Care for each other and the world, see the magic in it, and have hope. Magical narratives often feature, with strong roots in Japanese lore. The kami, or spirits of nature, will always rise up to defend themselves, whether that be the playful and curious Kodama in Princess Mononake, or the intimidating Nightwalker protecting its forest from Iron Town. Whatever the story, emotion is always at the forefront. We identify with these characters and care about what happens to them. This is essentially behind all stories that work, whether it be a quest for the One Ring or banding together to kill a great white shark. We relate to the individual stories behind the grand adventure. The stories beyond the story are also important to Ghibli films. It's called world building, making a believable tale because it fits into a society that would still be viable without the principal narrative. Take the bathhouse and spirited away. What is Kamaji's story, the man with many arms that runs the boiler room? Why is the bathhouse frog foreman so uptight? And what on earth is going on in Yubaba's relationship with her giant baby son? All questions that don't really get answered, and that aren't important to the main tale, but need to be there to provide a larger and more believable environment. From an animator's perspective, Ghibli films are just beautiful. The attention to detail, particularly in their backgrounds, is astounding. We are often treated to a feast for the eyes with rolling hills and forests, gorgeous skies and oceans. In the foreground, there is a different kind of attention to detail, through observation of ritual, 
food, the movement of figures. This adds realism and believability. For example, the meals eaten in Ponyo, the cleaning of a house in Howl's Moving Castle, the observation of the way cats move in The Cat Returns, and the chaotic way May scrambles around exactly like a four-year-old does in My Neighbor Totoro. This is classic Japanese animation at its best, and it is a testament to the dedication of the artists. As for the future, I would like to hope that the torch will pass to new animators when Hayao Miyazaki finally retires and the beauty and wonder can continue to convey the message that life is worth living and the world is beautiful. If we can stop arguing and start looking after it. Studio Ghibli often collaborates with other artists, for example, the wonderful Michael Dudok DeVitt's Red Turtle is something I advise you all to see as soon as possible. My favourite Ghibli film is Howl's Moving Castle, although I won't be making anything in relation to that film next week. I'll leave that as a surprise, but if you haven't seen any of the Ghibli catalogue, I advise you to start with My Neighbour Totoro, or Kiki's Delivery Service, if only for Gigi the Sarcastic Cat. If you haven't seen any of these films yet, then I'm very jealous. You have so much beauty and wonder ahead of you, so go forth and discover and I'll be here next week with a crazy mate for you. Tell me in the comments below which is your favourite Ghibli film and why. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, then please hit subscribe to find all Artie Mouse films that appear every Sunday. If you haven't already, then sign up below to join the tribe and get secret tips and ideas via email. No spam, I'm just here to help you gain confidence in your creative abilities. So learn to draw and let me hold your hand for the journey. Come on. It'll be fun. See you soon. <laughs>